Good afternoon, everybody. My name's Steve, and I run the engineering department here at Cameron Blind. I'm going to do a little talk this afternoon on cylinders. You know, two parts. I'll explain about the cylinders and the history of the cylinders. And my colleague Mike Callum will go through the inspection procedures and maintenance. So we'll go back and do a little bit of history on cylinders. <clears throat> when Cameron Blind started, when I started here some hundred thousand years ago. The Worthington cylinder was the only cylinder being used in hot air removal. This moved on later with the development of the stainless steel cylinder. This has moved on now to the duplex cylinder, which is the current model. Three different sizes, the smaller of the ones we don't have here, not very popular because it doesn't hold that much gas. We have a 60 litre and an 80 litre cylinder here. Show you later. Running alongside this now with the current uh, models is the new aluminium alley gas cylinder. Very popular tank now for small balloons. Okay, well, we've looked at the style and the type of cylinders Cameron Blues have done and are currently selling. Now we're going to look at the type of fittings which go into the top of the cylinder. Firstly, the contents gauge. Contents gauge is there to tell you how much propane you have in your cylinder. Okay. Works as a float system like this. Held in with four screws here, yeah. and liquid propane is kept inside the cylinder with the use of a rubber gasket. The general rule is if you ever take this gauge out, the gasket needs to be replaced. Secondly, the liquid outlet. Okay, traditionally, it's been a Muller or Rigo style valve, hand wheel type, three turns to open and close. Okay, your hose end screws on here. Running alongside of the Muller traditional valve, we have a quick shut off valve. Now, a quick shut off valve is a quarter turn valve. Okay, screwed through the flange adapter. Handle is in the upright position when the tank is open and round here when it's closed. We offer the Rego traditional outlet, screw to a block, screw to the top. Alongside that, we have the Tima outlet. Depending on the hose coupling on your burner, it will depend on which one of these you have or you choose. There is a dust cover available for each of these valves if you so wish to keep the rubbish and dirt from going on. Okay, if you have an older style burner, you may have a vapor pilot system. This is a vapor valve. Okay, this one has a pressure relief in the back, depending on what cylinder you have, depending on whether you have this one or one back. Okay. Screwed into this is a regulator. The regulator adjusts the height of your pilot plane. As your pressure decreases, you may want to open this up to maintain a pilot flame height. Elbow on there, and again, you have two styles of outlet. There is the Tima outlet, vapor outlet, and the Dynaquip outlet. Fixed level gauge, again, like the normal gauge, this one comes in three different lengths. Okay. Depending on the style and the type of your cylinder, will dictate which one of these you have. Sets the height of the liquid propane when you are filling your cylinder. You wouldn't want the wrong one in the wrong one tank, because either you will not have enough propane in there, or you will have too much. Next is the pressure relief valve. The pressure relief valve is in there, so if your cylinder overheats for any reason, Instead of blowing the cylinder up, the valve will open and release the pressure and then close again. It's very important it's kept clean. There is a dust plug cover to go on. To finish off the thread on here, the traditional or the standard is not just a normal nut. We offer a safety 
tube here. Instead of having the nut on there, this one will be screwed on. And then just the plug into the fitting here. Over the side of the basket, outside of the trailer, you will vent the propane vapor. We have a couple of special cylinders here, the alley gas cylinder and the GPS cylinder. Cut away so we can look inside and tell you exactly how the system is made. The main and obvious dis difference between the two is the alley gas has a plastic straight dip tube. The dip tube draws the propane to the liquid valve from the bottom. With the duplex cylinder, you have a stainless steel tube which comes down and it's bent at the bottom. This allows the propane to be drawn more from the centre of the can. Now a little bit of history on the old Worthington cylinders. They had an aluminium dip tube which came down. There were two sods, the straight style and the bent style. You can tell the difference because on the top of the cylinder there will be a sticker saying bent dip tube or there will be no sticker which means it's a straight dip tube. And you can see the bottom of the gauge and the float. If your cylinder has propane in, the float will be in the up position. As the propane drops as you use it, the float will start to drop correspondingly, going from 30% then to nothing. We can see the fix level gauge or dip tube here. This tells you when the propane, has, when you're filling your cylinder, has reached the required amount. As soon as it reaches here, you get it coming out the top. Okay. Very important this, as we've discussed different lengths for different cylinders. Finally, a word on master cylinders and vapor valves. Not so common nowadays. Most burners are a liquid pilot valve system where you only need liquid heat. Older burners uh, do require, may require a vapor outlet, i.e., your vapor valve. You'll notice on the bottom of this vapor valve here, we have the vent tube. We saw the tube earlier when we were explaining about vapor valves. You can see the orientation of the tube is to the side of the cylinder. Very important on inflations that the cylinder vapor valve is up. This tube will be pointing up, so you only draw vapor into your vapor system. A special word on Worthington cylinders. Worthington cylinders do not have a dip bent tube on the bottom of the vapor valve, it's screwed direct. It's equally important that the cylinder and the vapor valve are at the top on inflation to allow only vapor to be drawn into the pilot system. Hi, I'm Mike Callan, I'm the new inspector here at Cameron Balloons. I took over from Clive Brown a few years ago. Some of you guys would remember Clive and even know him on a personal level maybe. Today we're going to talk about cylinder maintenance and inspection, especially from a pilot owner point of view. It would just be the sort of things that you guys are allowed to do and just a small insight to what we do here at Cameron Blues. This is one of our new cylinders here that we built for customer specification requirements. Once the cylinder has been rolled up, we then fill the cylinder with compressed air. We then look for the exterior for defects and damage. We also leak test, so spraying around all the joints at various points, anywhere where a potential leak could occur. Once the leak detector has been applied and it settles down, if you see massive bubbling appear around the joints, you know you have a leak. So this section covers pilot owner maintenance. This is the section that you guys are allowed to do yourselves. Things that you can remove, your rubber top here for inspections, your cylinder covers, and your cylinder frames, that's in me. Bearing in mind that you have other cylinder covers, such as this one on the wearing which is an elastic one, whereas the one we just removed is a tie. Why would you remove your cylinder? If you're out in dry, dusty countries, conditions, you might get dirt, dust, and grit trapped underneath your cylinder foam. 
So you just want to just give that a wipe because it could cause scratches on the cylinder, which will get picked up on the annual inspection. Using just a damp cloth, just wipe the cylinder over. Then grab your dry cloth and make sure you just dry that off completely before refitting that cylinder cover. So the other things you're allowed to do, you can lubricate this main Rego valve here, like so, just using a simple silicon spray. You can also remove these O-rings, the gasket at the front here, and the smaller O-ring just on the inner side of this valve, like so, and replace them new as these are rubber and over time they will perish. There we have it, a new set of seals in your Ego valve. As mentioned earlier, here at Cameron Blooms, we do something called an annual inspection where we thoroughly look to go through your cylinder. We start with the bottom, the top of your cylinder, and your sides. We're looking for damage, defects, scratches, gouges, and dents. If any of these are deemed too deep, we would scrap your cylinder as it'd be unserviceable. Part of the annual inspection, we would look to leak test your joints around every valve including the gasket around your contents gauge. Every 10 years from date of initial examination or inspection, you should have your cylinder inspected. So that's every 10 years from the initial date. Um, and that includes a hydraulic pressure test uh, where the cylinder is filled with water, blanked off and is put under pressure and is tested. Um, just to look for defects in the welds uh, and any defects within the, the body of the cylinder. Um, and that is it, thank you very much. Mm -hmm.